welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. Alright, coming in with um, Love and Marriage Huntsville. Let's do it, say Love and Hip Hop Huntsville again. Um, season, <laughs> we're still on season one. This is episode 11. Yeah. Don't call it a comeback. It re didn't too much happen in this episode, but I'm going to tell you what the fuck did happen to Yeah. Listen, your boy Malta Holt tried to get real cute with your girl today. Let me go ahead and roll what happened on Instagram for you, and I'll be right back. Okay, Mr. Martel Holt decided that he wanted to get real cute with me, but I can get real cute back with him, okay? So, on Carlos King's Instagram account on yesterday, he decided he wanted to play a game of Smash, Marry, or Thrill. I said, well, I'll go ahead and play along. So, here's my response. You know better. Martel is taking notes. Next in line is, because you know he a cheater and whatnot. So, here's his cute little response to me. Definitely not you. You look too much like the dude with the beard on your profile pic. I said, well, typical peasant response. Like I said, you were scoping out the next contestant. All right, so here he goes. You're definitely below peasants, the peasants that I know. Get a makeover before coming for me. Bearded guy look alike. Let's go. Okay. Now you want the bee to come out of me. Okay. I say, you typical narcissist. Unlike you, we're good. Tune in to hear our commentary on YouTube. See you at the reunion. So here he goes. I wouldn't dare give you one extra view. I'm going to keep y'all at 50 views. He don't even know. Yeah, he do because he looks at us. Not sure if the missus and I will be at the reunion. Oh, make sure you keep tuning in to Love and Marriage Huntsville to see if I'm good. And then here's my response. I said, this is so fun and you're too easy. Trust me. Mm, never mind. See, I really wasn't even going to go there with him because I have too much in my email. But anyway, so here's his response. Beyond fun. It's my day off. Finger ready. So my response was, hell, basically mine too. Y'all saw that, right? Y'all heard me narrate through that, right? Was any of that necessary? Not at all. I mean, come on now. See, here's the thing with me. I'm, I'm thick-skinned. I'm one of those people I don't get offended by people. He said that I look like a man, all of that. Well, clearly, I got a man that's been faithful to me for over 17 years. Catch that T. Yeah, um, don't but, throw that at him. Yeah. Um, and if you say me and my husband look alike, it's because that's what happens when your spirits are actually equally yoked with and each other. And connected, bro. You start to look like each other. Exactly. So let's go ahead and do that. But here's my thing. And I was talking to really a bit about this earlier today. What got on my nerves is not what he said, but out of everybody that has something to say, and I'm not even going to say that I poked the bear and the bear shouldn't have came back at me. I'll yeah. take it. I said something, you came back at me, but what we're not going to do here, we're not doing the personal attacks. Exactly. Because I have never, never, ever, since I've been doing these reviews, I have never personally attacked anybody on any show that's because right. that's not my character we keep it at the base of whatever's being shown on the show the information that has been divulged on the show is what we speak about even when those people from huntsville your people not mm -hmm. not your people was in my inbox sharing information with us we kept all that skin right. to us and we could have exposed all of it just as well as Funk <clears throat> and Dineva because trust me, the same people that probably emailed him has emailed all of us YouTubers to give everybody the tea on what was going on. That's right. We knew that Melody was pregnant mm -hmm. months ago. We ain't never came at you crazy like that. So for you to come at a female, bypass the fact that you didn't even know who wrote it. That's right. But you automatically assumed the female wrote it and you bypassed the n that's standing in the picture with her and you address a female, you a punk. That's right. Weak. Don't know man. A that. whole man, a whole woman like my, my, my soul, soul said. said. That's exactly what you is, bro. Exactly. So, from the respect that I have tried to keep, even when I don't like them, and how I've always had this blanket uh, and I don't go below the belt, oh, it's below the belt now. Yeah. Let's, let's do that. So I'm going to say this. Yeah, that was real disrespectful to cross over another man and talk about another man's wife. I would never, ever do that to another brother out of respect. Because you a real man. Yeah, because I'm a real man. And just like Marceau said, you went to Sadar to tell Sadar that you had a problem with, uh, with Marceau. 
a real man will come at a real man if there's a problem. So obviously you have a problem with us and you couldn't come address us straight. So you had to attack us on, you know, social media. But like my wife said, the gloves are off. We never personally attack you, but now I don't even care. I, I, was, I, mean, I was rooting for your marriage. I, I was like, too, I, I was hoping that you would come out and say some stuff to help us out. But you know what? I don't even care. Matter of fact, I hope Mel leave you and take it all and take it all from you. <laughs> have you have beautiful kids. You have a good family. And you know what? I wanted you to keep it right now. I don't even care. Don't even care. I might be wrong. Family, if I'm wrong, let me know. But yeah, when you come for this right here, personal attack, now nah, we don't take that. So, mm -mm. certainly when we've never been the people that do yeah, it to you. And then what pissed me off the most was, I. it's almost been a good, what did it say, 40, um, 24 hours later. In the post, he has only addressed me. That's right. All those people, some people said they want to hit him in the head with a frying pan. Some people wanted to kill him. Some people wanted to kill him. He ain't said nothing to none of them. And then you act like you don't know who we are. So I think Don't it, play me for I, I cheap. Think, I think what it is, he jealous what we have right here. We have a good marriage, going strong, no cheating going on. Mm -hmm. We faithful. So you can, so anybody else is miserable. See, he's miserable. Yes. So miserable people hurt people trying to hurt people. So I just hope you get your skit together, bro. Mm -hmm. Get your skit together. At this point, I don't care. Because I, I know you're watching the reviews, so... Yeah, yeah, I know. And he I know he's not, he want to keep us yeah, at 50, 50 views. views. Which clearly we get way more than 50 views over here. So I know you're over here, bro. So, yeah, like I said, I don't even care what happens with your marriage at this point. Like I said, I hope Mel just go ahead and kick you to the curb. Teach you that's <laughs> going with the other girl. That, and I hope that she take you for all you got as well. So we don't care. So enough of that family. I don't want to so let's get into I don't it. want to disrespect the channel. So, yeah, we love y'all. Let's get it. Sorry that y'all had to see us get out yeah. of pocket like that. But that's one thing. If you want to... Never mind. Don't even worry about it. So, we're going to start off this episode with what had happened from last week. When Martel came and Marcel was like, listen, y'all kicking me while I'm down. And here's the thing. I said it last week. I, I'm, I always keep it fair. Marcel has said everything to your fucking face. That's right. So why is it now? Like a real man. But like I said last week, <laughs> it's like this. When it was going on and he said it to your face, it was cool. Y'all laughed about it. You got a little offended. You did whatever. But mm -hmm. now that you've seen it after the fact, you've yeah. able to see it after the show has aired and all of that good stuff. Now you are real time mad. Yep. Because now the repercussions are coming out and people are starting to question you and all that good skit. Well, they meet up and they want to meet. They met at the house and come to find out that the guys had never been to the house. So they're looking at the progress of the house and whatnot. And Martel is acting like he's surprised that Marso don't have two words to say to him. Yeah. And Marso he's accused was, that he's was cheating with 20 women. I would have him say to you either. So Marso was like, you know what? After the personal attacks, I, I mean, I ain't got skit to do. That's right. It is what it is. So then Mel came in the house. Then the ladies came in the house, and the whole reason, I guess, for them to come to this house was to talk about the comeback group. I don't give a buck about this comeback group no more. I no. want y'all to dissolve <laughs> this comeback dissolving. group because yeah. Mel doesn't want to be bought out of the comeback group, but yet she has admitted to not responding and knowing all of the texts when people are trying to get skit done with the comeback group. Then when the other two, the Scots get together and they do stuff for the comeback group, she's mad because all parties supposed to be involved with stuff going on in the comeback group. But how are we all going to work together when you yeah. ignoring the text? Yeah. And stuff still need to be done. Yep. So at this point, that's why I said buck the comeback group. Dissolve it. Yeah, y'all come up, Scott, y'all come up with a whole nother name and do something to, do something on your to, own. A, to affect y'all uh, neighborhood. And that's if any of this stuff even real. Yeah, because at this point, I'm trying to it figure out it's real. Now, it's getting suspect because the, the, the dots are not freaking connecting, Mike. This is what I told my husband earlier this week. This is, and I hope that I'm wrong because I, I keep wanting to say season one as if this is not season one, but the first part of season one. It seemed like this show was so organic. It just seems like they were around the way people that you could start to relate to. Blah, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. And now it just seems like, is any of this real? Yeah. And like I told my husband, I said, is this a script? Like, because I heard that Melody, well, somebody wrote us. <laughs> Melody was one that wrote a bunch of scripts when she was in college. This was her thing. She liked to write things out. Is this a script? 
Yeah. Like even the whole female. Is she being, you know, she being paid to be real? Yeah, cause and I'm like this. Following the storyline. I'm from Tappahannock. I'm from the same small town that Chris Brown is from. Everybody likes to be attached to something that's up and popping. As soon as I would have popped my black happy hind pots on a <laughs> TV screen, all of my dirt, no matter how much these people said they love me, somebody was going to air out my dirt because right. they want their name attached to something that's coming mm -hmm. up. They want to be that. I mean, that's just how it is. It's the crab and the barrel mentality. You mean to tell me that entire first half of this season... Nobody spoke about this girl. Like this girl was like a ghost. Yeah, no online pictures or nothing. And then all of a sudden when he calls her a peasant. Then she come out. Then she comes then out. And I'm like, is this a script? Like was this girl paid to come out? Was this person paid to, okay, we give you a few hundred thou, hundred thou, so that you can take the heat for this fake storyline. And we'll set you up for a little while. I know you don't feel like being, you know, working yeah. no more. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't you. know. I'm starting to question everything now. And I'm like, like I told you, the thing about being a successful business person, you don't want a lot of your personal business out in the street because that can flip, um, affect your clientele. Because some people see your life as a mess while I'm going to do business with you. And I'm like, y'all putting that on front street out here like that? I'm like, uh, and I know, you know, when you got to tell a story, when you got, you know, you got something going on on TV, you got to keep people coming back. So I can understand that point of having a drama, but I, we was hoping that it would be totally organic and, and no Not that manufactured. Yeah. So, yeah. So we got our eye on y'all. For real. So Melody was saying that unless you got over a million dollars, y'all can't buy them out the comeback room. Now, here's me. I ain't no big time business person like y'all are, but we got a couple of little businesses. Here's my thing. A little of something is a whole lot more than a lot of nothing. Yep. So you mean to tell me even if they had thirty to fifty thousand dollars to buy y'all out, y'all, because of pride's sake, you won't take that money and let them buy you out and continue to service the neighborhood, which is supposed to be the whole mission of this mm -hmm. group, right? Yeah. Just to get y'all out of the way so they can move forward. You'd rather dissolve the group and leave with nothing than to take something. I don't get it. It just makes no freaking sense to nah. me. <laughs> I don't know. That's why I said I'm starting to question everything now. Y'all going to have to talk me off the ledge. And after Mr. Martell pissed me off today. And like I said, I wasn't pissed off at what he said. Don't come at me sideways when I've never done that to you. That's right. That was my whole thing. So, um. Letitia and Mel start to get into it at the house because they have a whole lot of unresolved issues yeah, going on literally. with each other. And I'm so glad that they did have an opportunity to sit down with each other, which resolved nothing. nothing. They didn't go anywhere. But Letitia <laughs> talked to um, Marceau after they left the house with no resolve. And she was like, okay, hold on. He's accusing you of having 20 women. Well, actually, he said y'all, and Maurice said y'all. Yeah, y'all. And he tried to backpedal and pussy pop as James Caldwell would say, as if he didn't say y'all. Yeah, when he you say y'all. Yeah, y'all. Yeah, y'all is 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 Maurice us. and myself. Yeah, that's like the y'all. Like I said last week, who is y'all? Cause y'all yeah. means the Scots. Yep. So maybe he's talking about Sadar too. About, yeah, let's talk, talk, I mean, we throw Sadar in there too. <laughs> is he part of the y'all? So. I'm with Marceau on this. I know a whole lot of people give my bro a hard time, but here I am. Marceau was like, I'm kind of offended that the question is even a god darn question. Yeah. I'm offended that you would even have to ask me some es skit like that. Especially coming from the source. I, I think yeah. that's what it was. Yeah, coming from the source. Now, if somebody else that, you know, wasn't a liar actually came and said that, then maybe, yeah. You know, maybe somebody to bleed or somebody yeah. from the, out the streets would be like, hey, girl, hey, put your I seen your man cheating. He got da-da-da-da. Then, yeah, question. But coming from our... Nah. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what he was saying. That's why he was offended about the question. He was like, I am offended that the question is even a question right now. He was yeah. like, no. Ain't no... And then she oh. said 20 to 35, 37. <laughs> yeah. Where did Noah start jumping up at? Or, or if... The infidelity with Martell and her never was an issue. That maybe if it didn't happen. Right. And then he said it. So, you know, he deflected right now. So he going down some crab mentality. I'm going to pull the rest of the brothers down. Hmm. So we see Martell. He goes out there to this property. 
And um, I love when you see a whole lot of property and black people own it and they're able to get out there, have fun with nature, all that. That's my thing. I'm a country oh, yeah. girl. Oh, yeah. So they're out there shooting and having target practice and whatnot. And Uncle Dexter pulls up. Now, Uncle Dexter seems like he's the guy that you love to have around because of his wisdom. But at the end of the day, you still going to do what the buck you want to do. Mm -hmm. And then Uncle Dexter comes back and check you, put you back in your place, mm -hmm. tell you what you need to do to get your yeah. skit back together. But at the same time, if you're a narcissist like Martel, you're still going to do what the buck you want to do. Yeah. You just you act like you're listening. You act like you're listening. But you really ain't. <laughs> so Uncle Dexter was pretty much like, like, how did this happen? And here he goes with this, he's trying to justify it in his mind that because everyone else has several girlfriends, mm -hmm. that he's a little better off than the rest of the cheaters because he only had one. He's a moral cheater. He's a moral cheater. <laughs> and here's the thing, now I'm starting to question myself. When was it? Because he's talking about so you know, it was a year. It was a year, two, then it was two years, years, then it was three, three years. When was it? Like, I'm, I'm so confused right now. And Uncle Dexter was like, so are you dealing with the young lady or are y'all dealing with the young lady? And I did like what Martel said. Martel said, well, because I brought this into our household, yeah, she's, she's dealing, dealing with, with it, too. it too. So it is, we are dealing with it. He said, I'm in counseling and I think this guy's the one. He's going to be the one to fix me. He's going to get me saved. He's going to get me baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. He's going to fix all my problems and he's making me understand why I am the way I am. I said, I'm on it. I think you got a good one there. Because that dude right there was yeah, like... Yeah, coming at you straight. Yeah. <laughs> so, Uncle Ness is telling him, you know, you need to get your skit together. But I noticed when you when you changed. I noticed when you were in college, you started mm -hmm. to get that cockiness with you. Mm -hmm. And that cockiness actually mm -hmm. brings in and draws in the wrong oh, kind of people. Mm -hmm. And this, that, and the third. I was trouble. Like, it's not always that it draws the wrong type of people. It allows you to access the people that you really want. Yeah. You become a participant. Yeah. yeah. It's not that it draws in the wrong people. You make yourself available to be with the other people. And then that's a lame excuse to say that, you know, you going to cheat on your wife because your friends are cheating on your wife. That is that is just such a not a cop out. <laughs> yeah. You did it because you wanted to you do wanted it. You wanted to do it. And like I told you, I, and I've told you for years, and matter of fact, a, a, a person of wisdom came and told me this was like, if you ever thinking about stepping out on your wife, you ought to just go ahead and divorce her first. Yeah. Don't even put her through that, because it ain't even about her. It's about you. You the one that wanted to commit infidelity. You know, it shouldn't be nothing that she can do to mm -hmm. cause me to cheat. Because coming into a marriage, you already know that the person, if you do your research and go through proper counseling, you'll know that it's no one can give you 100% of what you need. There's no way. No way. So you already know, like they say, the 80-20 rule is probably even lower than that. That, 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 just, <laughs> that, just make, that just make it sound good. So in a marriage, you're going to suffer some things that you're not going to get. But most of the time, you're going to get the stuff that you really need. So most of the time, the stuff that we want is really not a need. It's just that we, we want it, you know. Yeah. You know, fellas, we want sex around the clock. But, you know, you can't have sex around the clock because you got to work, you got to clean, you got to grab. And then we have yeah. this thing called a menstrual. <laughs> yeah, so you got, you know, so got to be a, a, a break in there. So to blame your spouse for the reason why you cheat is not an excuse. Because if that was the case, if she was that bad, you ought to left her and then go to this other woman and not even put her through that. And here's the thing, vice versa. I'm pretty sure that you won't give it her everything that she needed. That's so right. So she had the same excuses, mm -hmm. the same rationale that you used to go out there and cheat. She had that same thing inside of her. She could have did it as well. That's right. And she still would have been just as wrong as you. That's right. Ah, uh, it's a mess. So Mel is getting awarded at um, a, boy, a Boys and Girls Club. And she gets to go there and do a speech and whatnot. And the entire family is there. Um, with her. Martel is there with her. She's totally like shading the heck out of Martel the entire time. Yep. <laughs> and I was like, that's funny. But here's the thing. It seemed like it was kind of in reverse because they were at the house being cordial with each other. But then when they were in public, she was shading them. I said, uh, he, he I was thought, like, what I, you thinking about? She was I like, thought y'all turned the, turned the switch on when it was time to perform in public. She didn't turn it on that day. Turn off the lights. But that's what you do when you, when you, when you do a script. <laughs> <laughs> so we go over there to the um Martel not Martel look all these M's 
Ma Reese's and Marceau's mom's house. And oh, y'all yeah, remember before, powerful. right after we broke for first season, first half of first season. Yeah. <laughs> um, they actually bought their mom a house, and I wow. couldn't be so wow. I couldn't be more proud of them. Yes. I mean, that was so awesome. And they were able to put their mom into a home and not only a home but their mom um i think she uses a wheelchair so they was mm -hmm. able to customize this home and make it ready and available for her needs i just thought that was so freaking dope but she was having her first family dinner over at the house and when it was time to say the prayer she just broke down mm -hmm. and she was like this is what me moving to Huntsville meant to me mm -hmm. is that I'd be able to have my family close. And of course, you can tell Maurice is a mama's boy because when mama started crying, Maurice was like, mama, 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 money. mama, money. But I think what happened to him, he thinking back to like they, they were saying that she worked like two jobs. Yeah. And they struggled. She did dag on the She good. got eight kids. So we only just only seeing Ooh. two of them. She got eight of them. Man, I just can't imagine the struggle. So them to come out of that struggle to get to this point to be able to pay cash for um, their mom's house. Well, we don't know like, if they pay they, cash. We don't know if they got a mortgage on it or not. Well, we, but we, at least we well, got in, my mind, in my mind, they got their mom a house and it's paid for and she ain't got to pay a dime. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, Even if y'all pay the monthly a, mortgage, that's a blessing. Man, what an honor to be able to do that, man. Yeah. I, 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 was, I would love to be able to do that Me for my too. mom. Man. One day, we're going to be on y'all level one day. Yeah, man. That's, but, that's inspiring, though. You is. know, that's inspiring to do that. But for right back now, to your mom like that. my mama just live here. Yeah, she live here. Yeah. And she at the casino right now. Yeah, and my, my mama live, you know, way over yonder. And so. she at Kings of Me at the amusement park yeah. right now. <laughs> it's a lot going on, y'all. So I thought that was really cool. Um, so Tisha, Tisha ended up going to, well, no, at this dinner, Sadark. <laughs> I said, Mr. Tea Time. Mr. Tea Time started, <laughs> started asking, okay, is everything good now? Like, the comeback group, y'all need to get that skit squared away. They was like, no, we not good. And um, Marcel was like, you know what? I think I could rectify things with Martel on a personal level. But business, we can't do that no more. I agree. So, Sadar said, what I'm going to do is maybe we can have a guy's weekend at the cabin. Get together and just squash all that skit. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. Let's man up. Yeah. Let's see if we can talk about this skit. Don't nobody walk away. Don't nobody get bullheaded. Let's just work this thing out. Whatever you got with me, let me know, yeah. and we can we can deal. And uh, Marceau was like, "Yeah, I'm willing to do it." He said, "I don't I don't, I don't want to mess with the business piece." I, well, in other words, I, I don't want him to mess with my paper. No. But the friendship, we can we can we can do that because we've been friends for years. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so and the one thing that. about friendships is this is my whole thing. Even if we decide to not be friends anymore, that's that's cool. That's cool. But at least give me the respect to let me know what the hell is going on. Yeah, well, Don't the, leave the, me the out there issue. wondering. Yeah. yeah, the real if issue. If I ask you if something's wrong and you tell me nothing's wrong, but clearly I know something's wrong, don't do that. Yeah. I've had that. It doesn't feel good. And it always leaves you wondering, what the fuck did, did or, I do? Yeah. What did I do? Or what did you misunderstand? Because I know I didn't do anything. Yeah. And if you just tell me what it is that you feel like I did, I can clarify what you may have been thinking in your head and we'd be good. Yep. It's crazy that a conversation can heal a whole lot of skit, but we don't want to talk. Yep. So Tisha and Mel, Tisha um, invited Mel to a coffee house to sit down and talk because in <clears throat> Tisha's mind, she was like, this, she, Mel's moving funny. She's not treating me the way that we used to. And y'all remember when, before we broke, Tish and Mel was kind of trying to get real, real, real cool again. And Mel was teaching Tish a lot of the stuff in the business world that yep. she didn't have experience in and that mm -hmm. she wasn't um, privy to being in those social circles. So it was kind of like they was really on this groove, on this path. And now all of a sudden, they don't rock with each other no more. Tish said that, you know, she's, of course, she's ignoring her um, text messages. She's not, you know, responding to her. She's asking her the same thing. Have I done anything? Mel was like, I'm fine. Everything is fine. But Tish is like, but it's not the not same. Everything. Nah, it's not the same. And there is a difference between somebody that's going through stuff in their personal life and them acting funny with you. Mm -hmm. There is a difference. And yeah. you can always tell. 
And I'm with Mel. Mel was like, I had a whole lot going on. Like, you remember, I got a lot going on. So, just say that friendship wasn't your priority at that time. Just say that. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I was, Everybody I was started out being in our friendship. But I was going through a lot. And I was traveling out, whatever. Uh, where can we go from here to fix it? Yeah, I yeah. apologize. Because even Tish was like, you know how close I was <laughs> with my aunt. And my aunt died. And you didn't say a god doing thing. And Mel was like... Yeah, she thought and it was, I said, that was funny. I hope that that was some rough cuts. Yeah, I hope it was. Because too, yeah. that was disrespectful as hell. Uh -huh. But Mel was like, in the text message, in the group message, you didn't hear me say that I was praying for your family. Blah, 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 blah. Now, she did do that. Then, I mean, you kind of just got to take it how they give it. Mm -hmm. um, but Tish was like, no, I don't believe you said that to me. And then you out there putting stuff out there on in the streets about my husband and why he wasn't wearing his ring and blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. blah. And Melody was like, I'm not going to tell you skit about what or what not your husband is doing. Because he ain't doing that. That's why they making it up. But I'm with Melody on this one. Only f because of experience. I'm one of those people that I, I'm, I'm, I love to be able to keep it real and be honest with friends about stuff like that. But my past experiences have taught me to stay your happy black hard parts out of it. And you try to get the guilty party to confess. Because if you go and you tell your good, good girlfriend that you don't see her man out there doing X, Y, Z with one, two, and three. Nine times out of ten, good, good girlfriend going to be pissed with you. And good, good girlfriend's man going to be pissed with you. And you're going to be the one on the island to yourself. And they're going to be row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Mm -hmm. And they mad with you. And you were only the person that tried to blow the whistle. And it will take for that person to get caught over and over and over again. For them to realize, but that was a lie. Mm -hmm. But now you don't buck my friendship up. Now yeah, we, we, we not good no more. So what I do now is if I catch somebody doing something like you, 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 got, you got 15 days. You got 15. You threaten them into confessing. And you walk away. Yeah. So that's why you don't never bring it up. Yeah. They should so, know you brought it up. So I'm with Melody on that yeah. one. I, but don't taunt her with yeah, that. Yeah, don't. Exactly. Don't bring it up. If you don't want to put all the cards on the table. Shut up about don't, it. Yeah, don't say it. And it's the same thing with Tish. If you're not willing to give <clears throat> Melody all the information you know about the cars, these cars, uh, these houses, <laughs> these, don't, don't keep taunting her with that. Yeah. And like she said, she said, I know a whole lot of stuff about your man that I'm not divulging either. Like that BMW that he don't have with you, that hit Melody in a real hard place. Yeah, because she, she, was, was like, she was staring it out of space. So I was like, yeah. if y'all not willing to give up all the information, don't shoot blanks at each other with that. Yeah. Because that's hurtful. And then if y'all ever become cool again, that's always sitting in the back of your mind. Yeah. So, so uh, Mr. Carlos King, man, you know what? If this really is a script, you got us, bro. I, I'm going to give it to you. You got us on the first half. Yeah, but now it's like, uh, because, yeah, yeah. It's a lot. But, yeah, that's all. They, they didn't give us too much. Um, the, the one thing that drew us into this show was the combat group and what you're going to be doing for yeah, the and, and, seeing and we're getting nothing. Yeah, and, and seeing some successful black people on TV. We're getting nothing but yeah. love and hip-hop. In a country town called Huntsville. Yeah, but fam, I'm sorry, but I ran in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, that's that. You you know that's not us, but you but you know when you you know you come for us and um, nine out of ten y'all probably go and get Martel too on his page if y'all do. We don't know nothing about it. <laughs> oh, we know all of it. Yeah, we know about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And think about it. He know who we are. Don't don't yeah, even try to play us like that. Yeah, he when, be this, over here. when this show first came out, it was probably three reviewers doing this show. Yeah. And most of y'all were like, I ain't never heard of this show. We only watch the show because y'all told us about it. Yeah. Then some of y'all still say y'all don't watch it. Y'all just come over here. <laughs> so don't play me for cheap, Mr. Martel Holt. We got our eye on you, bro. Straight from the VA. And I know you hear us. From the dirty, dirty south. Two up, two down. Holla. Holla.